Hello everybody. Welcome to a weirdly political video. Uh, we're making a tier list of all, actually scratch that, not all, we're missing two, uh, but most of the presidents of the United States were missing Trump and Biden. Uh, so let's just put them on here. Let's put, let's, let's just put them on here where, where I think they would be. Um, I don't know, Biden, I, I'm gonna put him on creep, <laughs> he, he's seen away he's sniffing kids and crap, it's freaking, <laughs> it's pretty weird, dude, um, and then I'll probably put Trump at a solid C, maybe, I don't know, uh, so, I am in a bit of predica predicament, I have been, I've recorded this video, like, so many times, or at least I thought I have, but I haven't, and I went through a whole monologue. I went all the way to believe this guy, maybe. Um, and apparently, I wasn't recording the whole time, so I can't I can't make all the jokes I want to anymore. So basically, we're gonna put Obama and C, George Bush and C, and we're gonna put we're gonna put my man Bill Clinton here. Uh, into good old S. You know why? This is why President B Bill Clinton is getting an S tier. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> Ms. Lansky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time. <laughs> never. These allegations are false. Sure, sure they are, buddy. Sure. <laughs> so my man Bill gets the gets the uh, S tier on that one. Um, yeah. I, also, I hated that because we went through all of these presidents, and I did so much reading through Wik Wikipedia articles. So all of that knowledge just down the freaking gutter, and it busts my nuts. Uh, anyways, Ronald Reagan, I'm pretty sure he put him in a solid B, I don't know. This guy... I don't know. I, f I forget where I put this guy at. I don't know. Uh, excuse me, I put this guy at creep, because, I mean, freaking look at him. Uh, Richard, uh, Nixon, I don't remember where I put him. We're gonna put him at a C. Uh, President, this guy, uh... I, let's look at Lyndon, what is that, B, something, uh, uh, oh, he's sorry after the Democrat of Texas, okay, uh, he served as U.S. Representative, Senator's Majority Leader, okay, uh, Johnson is one of the most controversial presidents in American history, public opinions, and its legacy con uh, continuously evolved since his death. Historians and scholars rank Johnson in the upper tier because of his domestic policies and his administration passed uh, major laws that made serious advancements in the civil rights, uh, health care, and welfare. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so, that, that gets a thumbs up for me, actually. Uh, we'll put him in a B tier. John Kennedy, we'll put him there. Uh, Dwight uh, Eisenhower. Uh, that's a freaking cool name. It's so weird. I don't know. Uh, I forget what I read about him, but that's a freaking kick butt name. Uh, but let's, let's look him up real quick. Uh, one of the domestic friend Eisenhower was a moderate conservative who continued New Deal. Uh, New Deal was a series of programs, public work projects, uh, financial um, for reforms and regulations enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, we'll get him get to him later. Um, uh, let's see, he was. Covertly opposed Joseph McCarthy, who contributed to the end of the uh, McCarthyism. <laughs> is that like some is <laughs> is that like some sort of like 
cult like thing or like some like Christianity Christianity type thing. Anyways, uh, invoking executive privilege, he signed Civil Rights Act. All right, all right. Uh, minor recession. Okay, so the nation he has expressed his concerns of dangerous military spending. Uh, Da, 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 which he dubbed the military industrial historians as in his president and placing him uh, the upper tier of American presidents. Okay. Uh, I would put him at a good old, good old B. B sounds good. Uh, S. Truman. I don't know where I put him again. Okay, uh, when communist North Korea invaded uh, South Korea, uh, it was an initial success. However, the war was settled. It you know, lasted throughout the final years of Truman's presidency. Da 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 da. Historians Truman was ranked as the 10 greatest presidents. Okay. Uh, let's see. Harry S. Truman was. 33rd president of the United States began on April 12th of 1945 when Truman became president of his predecessor's death and ended on uh, 1953. He had been vice president for only 82 days when he succeeded upon presidency of Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, Alright, uh, for your term, da 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 da. Alright, so. Uh, Apparently, he's one of the ten greatest presidents. I don't... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, if people are put him, putting him that, I think it'd be kind of safe to put him there. Franklin D. Roosevelt. So, this guy is the guy... Because this guy served, like, so many terms. Uh, like... Uh, because he was, he was elected around the... Um, the time during the Great Dep Depression, where ev everybody hated Hoover, Her Herbert, Herbert, Herbert the pervert—I don't know—Hoover. Uh, uh, Basically, he was named after the Hoover Dam. I mean, the Hoover Dam was named after him. My bad. Um, and everybody thought he like brought bad luck. Uh, everybody hated him. Uh, and it was during the Great Depression time, so everybody just kept vo voting for uh, Roosevelt. Um, because at the time, it wasn't a law, uh, that you had to go two terms. It was a precedent, like, uh, not a president, a precedent, which is, a, a tradition. It was basically tradition that you went through, uh, uh, two terms that, that George Washington started. Uh, so, he, it, it, it wasn't a law until, like, the 80s, maybe, maybe, maybe even after that, I don't even know. So, if he was really that good in the eyes of people, uh, then I would put him at B, and I'll put him at a good old nice U, maybe even creep, because, I don't know, he kind of looks like a creep, but I don't think he'd be as creepy as this guy, Jesus Christ. Uh, Ca Calvin... What is that name? I don't know, I'll put him at a... Let's see. Uh, Warren Herring, those eyebrows, dude need to get him checked this <laughs> wow old joe wilson he looks <laughs> he looks like brayley he looks like this guy you see you see right there he kind of looks like him that's that's funny um anyways uh let's world wilson that name sounds familiar so Okay, Thomas Woodrow Wilson, 1956, 1924, was an American politician. Da -da -da, Democratic Party. Uh, Wilson super, uh, served as president of uh, Princeton University as governor in New Jersey before winning the 1912 uh, presidential election as president. Uh, Wilson changed the national economic policies uh, and led the United States into World War I. In 1917, he was leading architect in League Nations. All right. Uh, during the Civil War, uh, reconstruction after uh, PhD. Da 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 da. Uh, 
Let's see, Wilson was intended to seek a third term into office, but suffered a severe stroke on 1919 that left him incapacitated. His wife and doctor controlled Wilson, and no significant decisions were made. Meanwhile, his policies uh, alien alienated German and Irish Democrats oh come on Irish ones um and the Republicans won on landslide uh in 1920 presidential presidential election scholars have generally ranked Wilson in the upper tier presidents uh although he had been criticized for supporting racial segregation Alright, his liberalism nevertheless was a major factor of American foreign policy in the vision ethic of determination. Okay, well, if he, sir, uh, we're gonna have to put him in the good old racist uh, there. William H. Taft, this guy. Ooh, it's a weird name. Taft. The kind of freaking name is that? Uh, what was it? William H. Taft. William H. Taft. There we go. Uh, let's see. Chief Judge is the only person who held both offenses. Da 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 da. Excuse me. Successor to Theodore Roosevelt, which is the more popular of the two Roosevelts, but I personally know the Franklin D. Roosevelt a little bit more than I know Teddy Roosevelt. I only know Teddy Roosevelt from Nightmare, uh, Night, um, Night at the Museum, actually. So, in 1912, Woodrow Wilson, after Roosevelt, split the Republican vote. Da, 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 da. After leaving obvious, uh, office, uh, Taft turned to Yale as a professor. Okay, that's a critically acclaimed school. Uh, his, um, political activity and his working against war. Uh, in the League of Enforce Peace, uh, League to Enforce Peace in 1921. All right, that's cool. Harding appointed Taft uh, Chief Justice, and the office had a long sought Chief D Justice Taft was a conservative of business issues. Under the term, uh, under him were advances in individual rights and poor health. Um, he resigned in February 1930 and died the following month. He was buried at. Uh, Arlington National uh, Cemetery, the first president of the Supreme Court justice to be uh, interred there. Uh, Taft is generally listed in the middle in the certain rankings of the presidents. Okay, uh, let's see. Taft was born. Uh, his father, da da da, Secretary of War. Taft intended Yale. That you gotta you gotta be pretty smart to get in that school. Uh, uh, and joined the Skulls and Bones, uh, which his father was a founding member of. Okay, what is Skull and Bones? Skull and Bones is also known as the Order. <laughs> okay. Or, uh, Order, uh, 322 of the Brotherhood of Death is the, uh, Undergraduated uh, uh, senior secret of student society at Yale University in the New Haven, uh, Connecticut, the oldest senior class society at the university. Skull and Bones has become a culture. Oh, come on! I want to read more about this. This this is intriguing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the oldest senior class society at the university, Skull and Bones became a cultural institution known for its powerful alumni uh, and various conspiracy theories, and one of its big three societies at Yale, uh, and other two being Scroll and Key and Wolf's Head. What are with these names, dude? Alright, so he got into Yale, which I'm pretty sure that's not all too easy to get into and he was part of the skull and bones cult whatever it is uh so he's in the mid ranking also he looks freaking obese as heck uh so we're gonna we're gonna put him in a 
and also his last name, I don't know, his last name's pretty freaking whack. I don't know, man. Uh, we'll put him, we'll put him at a seat here. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, well, I mean, he, he seems, he, he seemed pretty cool in a, uh, at the museum. We're going to put him at a solid A tier. Uh, Uh, President Benjamin Harrison. What is this? Oh, Benjamin Harrison. This is the this is the great. Uh, this is the grandson of this guy, William H. Harrison, and he was the uh, great grandchild of another Harrison, who was also a politician, but also did plant stuff. Um, but he wasn't all too. He wasn't all too cool. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna put him in the D tier. Uh, Grover Cleveland, uh, we're gonna put him in a B tier. Uh, I know who Grover Cleveland is, uh, thanks to the amazing, uh, Dark Age of Nintendo, uh, video made by none other than Scott the Wasp. <laughs> Uh, so there's that, uh, oh god, uh, this guy, what is it, what is his name? I feel, <coughs> I feel like I have to sneeze. Come on, sneeze. Sneeze. I can't sneeze. Anyways, uh, what is that, what does that say? I, I, I don't know what that says. Uh, okay, apparently his name is Chester. That looks nothing like Chester, though. Anyways, uh, he's got a sick... He, he's got, like, a Jay Schlatt look going on with that facial hair. Uh, Alan Arthur, uh, born in 1829 to 1886... <clears throat> was an American warrior politician who served the 21st president of the United States, previously the 20th vice president. He succeeded <clears throat> to, to the presidency, presidency uh, upon the death of President James uh, Garfield uh, two months after Gar Garfield was shot by an assassin. All right. Uh, that's cool. Suffering from poor health, Arthur made only a limited effort to secure the Republican Party nomination in 1884. Uh, he re retired at the end of his term. Uh, journalist Alexander McCord wrote, No man ever entered the presidency so profoundly and uh, wittily. Uh, distrusted as Chester Allen Arthur, and no one ever retired more generally respected alike by political friend and foe. Arthur is <clears throat> Arthur's failing health and political temperament uh, combined to make his administration less active uh, than modern presidency, yet he earned uh, praise among the con. con, con Contempt, contemporaries for his uh, solid performance in office. The York world summed up Arthur's presidency at his death in 1886. No duty was, uh, excuse me, neglected in his administration. Um, and no interest project alarmed the nation. Mark Twain uh, wrote of him. It would be hard indeed to better President Arthur's administration, despite the modern <clears throat> historians generally describing Arthur's presidency as mediocre or average, and Arthur is one of the least memorable presidents. Uh, so, he's not very memorable, he's more of a mid-tier, nothing really, yeah, you know, it was, it was just meh, uh, um, so we're, we're just gonna, just gonna put him here, I guess. Uh, James Garfield, huh? 
I think we're starting to get into the territory of things I don't know. James Agram <coughs> Garfield, November 1831 to 1881. Uh, he, oh my god, he died young. Uh, was well, the 20th president of the United States, serving from March 4th, 1881 to his, uh, his death six months later. Two months after he was shot by an assassin, a lawyer, so, wait, he was, his death six months later, uh, two months after he was shot by his, so he got shot by an assassin and survived for two months? Is that what you're telling me? What, what about his death? James A. Uh, Garfield was the 20th. President of the United States was shot in Baltimore uh, Railroad Station, Washington, D.C. Dang, that's pretty freaking alpha. I don't know, man. Uh, on July uh, 2nd, 1881, Charles, uh, that's his name, uh, a disappointed, delusional uh, office seeker shot Garfield at Baltimore uh, in Washington. The wound was not immediately fatal, but he died on September 19th, 1881. Come on, September 19th, eight days after the incident? That's not a coincidence. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know, man, but that, that's pretty freaking alpha, being able to just, just survive those shots, you know? Yeah, it's not every day you get shot, so uh, we're gonna put, we're gonna put him at a B tier. Uh, right. What are you? Okay, that this is a guy. Oh God, what did I do? Uh, President Ruther. Can we put him there? There we go. Uh, what does that say? What kind of name is that? Okay. <clears throat> Ruther Hayes. Uh, 1822 to 1893, okay, so he lived longer. It was an American lawyer or politician who served the 19th president of the United States. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Before, oh, before the American Civil War, Hayes was a lawyer. Uh, uh, Hayes was a lawyer and staunch abolitionist, so, who defended refugee slaves in court proceedings that's cool okay he served in the union army all right that that's pretty freaking cool uh at the end of his term hayes kept his pledge not to run for re-election re and retired to his home in ohio okay that's cool and he became an advocate for social education reform and da -da -da, his written his greatest achievement was to restore popular faith in uh, presidency and to reverse the deterioration of executive power, power that has established itself after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, his supporters have praised his commitment to civil service reform and critics have uh, his leniency toward former Confederate states as well as the withdrawal of federal support of African American voting civil rights. Historian scholars rank Hayes uh, as an average to below average president. What? What? He served in the Union Army though and he was an abolitionist. Come on dude. What? How is he <laughs> how is he a below average? What? He's so Wait, what? So his critics have de derided his leniency toward former Confederate states, as well as withdrawal from of federal support of. Oh, so he. Oh. Wait, what? His supporters. Oh, okay. So. All right. Oh, I understand now. I understand. Okay, so. That would go into a C tier. Uh, 
Ulysses Grant, this guy, he also fought in the Civil War, I believe, uh, and I'm pretty sure he was also a, uh, he fought in the Union, so, Ulysses Grant, so, <laughs> that is also a freaking amazing name, um, here we go, let's see, uh, Ulysses Grant, da da da, -da was an, uh, American military officer who uh, served as president as the 18th president of the United States from 1869 uh, to 1877. Uh, as commanding general, he led the Union Army to victory in American Civil War. I mean, there, there it is. That's pretty freaking cool. Uh, sir, excuse me. Uh, assessments have often ranked Grant as one of the worst presidents in American history. However, uh, Revolution, uh, oh my god, what did I just say? Revin, Revis, Revi, Revisionists? Uh, challenges to this narrative, uh, have received significant support recent times, although critical of scandals modern modern historians have emphasized his uh, presidential administration's accomplishments uh, these include the prosecution of clan of the clan the KKK uh, because that was made back in the 1800s um, so uh, treatment of black people um, as both human and American, the innovative Native American policy, da 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 da, Grant's uh, secretary ranked as ranked high by historians, ranked high by me. Uh, he was against the Confederacy, so there's that. He gets a B tier in my book. Uh, and, does that say Andrew Johnson? What? I, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't see that. Andrew Johnson, yeah, that's his name, okay, uh, excuse me, all right, Andrew Johnson, 1808 to 1875, was the 17th president of the United States, he was human presidency when he was vice president at the time of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Johnson was a Democrat and ran Lincoln on the National uh, Union ticket, coming to office in the Civil War, concluded he favored quick restoration and seceded the states to the Union without protection for newly freed people who were formerly enslaved. Uh, this led to conflict. Uh, the Republican uh, dominated Congress, uh, culminating in his impe impeachment by the House of Representatives. He was uh, adequated um, in the Senate by one vote. Okay, Johnson is an uh, implement of his own form of presidential reconstruction, a series of proclamations directed the seceded uh, states to hold conventions, elections from, uh, to reform the civil governments. Uh, southern states uh, returned many of their old leaders and passed black codes. Those weren't good, I don't believe. Um, like, it, it was, black codes were, like, they, they were super racist, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was, like, uh, like, whenever the, the, the slaves were free, they, um, there was, like, certain rules they would still have to abide by. Even though the slaves are free, they still weren't treated fairly, uh, so they had to, by by all these rules is so even though they were technically free they weren't free so uh so black clothes to deprive freeman many civil rights liberties da, 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 da. Johns, johnson returned to tennessee after his presidency and gained uh vindication when he was elected in the senate of senate in 1879 making him one of the making him the only former president to serve in the Senate. He died five months into his term. Johnson's strong opposition to federally 
guarantee rights for black uh, Americans is widely criticized. Historians constantly rank him one of the worst presidents in American history. I mean, look at him. He looks like a jerk. So, what am, so what am I reading here? So, southern states return many of their old leaders in past black codes. Uh, so he passed the black codes? Is that what I'm... What? Uh, implement of his own presidential reconstruction. It was a period of... Fine, unless... Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so, yeah. Basically... There. Abraham Lincoln, we're gonna put him in A tier. Um, now, hear me out. Hear me out. He's a good president. He's a great president. Better than I would ever be. I do believe he's a tad, little tiny bit overrated. Because people, people like him because he wanted to get rid of slavery. He wanted to abolish slavery. That's wrong. That's incorrect. He did not want to abolish slavery at first. Uh, he wanted to stop the spread from sla uh, spread of slavery throughout all of America. So wherever slavery was, he would keep it contained there, just not have it spread anywhere else. Got it? Um, and well, to be honest, anybody could have done that, but nobody really did. So he was the only one to really act upon it. So I can see why people absolutely love him. Uh, however, I he's not my favorite president personally. Uh, so, but yeah, he, he's a really good guy. Also, he's absolutely freaking alpha male. He's one of the tallest presidents to uh, to live, and um, and he did wrestling even, which is freaking alpha as heck. Also. Uh, like some of these presidents, uh, it was like a couple, one of these presidents, I'm pretty sure, I don't know who it was, they, who got shot, uh, I read about one of them who got shot, like, twice and survived, uh, until they died from infections. Uh, this guy didn't even die immediately either, after he was sh shot in the head, I believe, too. Uh, so, that's pretty freaking alpha. So, you, you, you get in a nice, nice A tier for me. People will probably put him in S tier. But, <coughs> I mean, he, 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 he didn't have, like, military background or anything. Nothing would, like, S tier would have to be, like, he's, like, basically perfect for the country. I put <laughs> Bill Clinton here is a joke, okay? Like, look, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I mean, come on, classic, classic line. That deserves an instant S tier. If Abraham did that, he would get like S plus plus tier. Um, but, <laughs> but anyways, what the frick is that? Okay, uh. <coughs> Oh, Jesus. I'm fine. I'm <laughs> fine. Um, uh, James Buchanan Jr., April 23rd, 9... 1791! Wow, this guy's freaking dust! This guy's actually freaking ancient. What the frick? Okay. It was an American lawyer, diplomat, and politician who served as the 15th president of the United States from... Uh, 1857 to 1861, he previously served as Secretary of the States from 1845 to 1849, and rep represented Pennsylvania as both houses of the U.S. Congress, uh, excuse me, and was advocate for states' rights, da 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 da, da. okay, cool. Buchanan's leadership during his, uh, lame duck period, <laughs> lame duck or outgoing politician is a elected official whose successor was uh, who has already been elected or will be soon and outgoing politician okay uh before american civil war he was he has been widely criticized he simultaneously angered the north by not stopping uh secession of the south 
by not yielding their demands. He supported the ineffective Corwin Amendment. What is that? Was a purpose amendment to the United States Constitution that was never adopted. It would shield domestic institutions of the states from federal constitution amendment policies and abolish okay um <clears throat> in the effort of reconcile uh, the country he made an unsuccessful attempt to, to reinforce fort sumter uh which was the attack that uh the confederates did uh, on the union which kicked off the civil war uh see the or it its origin dates to the war of 1812 when the okay uh yeah and apparently that was apparently the confederacy attacking fort sumter was a signal to uh, the Confederacy that it was a sign of war, even though they were the ones who attacked it. So they took an offense to that, even though they were the ones that attacked it. And nobody even died during that battle either, so freaking bruh. <laughs> All right, so, uh, but otherwise, uh, refrain from uh, preparing the military. What? His failure to foresaw the Civil War has been described as in, um, what are these words? Incompetency? Uh, excuse me, okay. And he spent his last years defending his reputation in his personal life. Buchanan never, never married. <laughs> Idiot. Okay, uh, the only U.S. president to remain a lifelong bachelor, leading some questions, is sexual orientation. Buchanan died of a respiratory failure in 1860 and was buried in uh, Lanchester, Pennsylvania, where he lived for nearly 60 years. Historians, scholars uh, consistently rank Buchanan as one of the worst presidents in American history. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you have to spend the last years of your life, you know, doing that, I mean, <laughs> I mean come on, dude, how, 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 all right, uh, so, uh, yeah, so, basically, yeah, we're, go we're gonna put him, even though he's, we're, we're gonna put him at the lowest tier, I don't think he was racist, not from what I read, but, Man, we're, we're, it's the lowest tier. It's the lowest tier. So, it's a combination of stupid and racist. There you go. So, this doesn't make him racist. This just makes him stupid. Uh, and also, he he never had sex. <laughs> what a freaking loser. What a, what a virgin loser. Anyways, Franklin Pierce. All right. Uh, Franklin Pierce, 1804 to 1869, was the 14th president of the United States, the Democrat who believed the abolition, that the abolition, abolitionist movement was a fundamental threat to the unity of the nation. What? The abolitionist movement, the United States abolition, um, abolitionism, okay. Uh, the movement that sought to end slavery, he thought it was a fundamental threat to the unity? What? He alienated anti-slavery groups by signing the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which I'm pretty sure ended in absolute... It, it was basically, m like, mini... It was like miniature civil war. Or, it was around this time. It was like... I, th I think it was called Bleeding Kansas. Uh, and it was basically just a smaller version of the Civil War. But it was like the prequel <laughs> to the Civil War. Uh, so, unfortunate Fugitive Slave Act. Oh. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, uh, 
yeah, yeah, I know where we're putting him, Jesus Christ, <laughs> okay, um, I don't know, man, it's pretty cringe, I don't know, racism, racism isn't a thing nowadays, you know what I mean, it's, it's pretty cringe nowadays, uh, that's how you get yourself canceled, don't, Fra uh, Franklin Pierce should not have Twitter, let's just say that, well, if he does have Twitter, that would be absolutely terrifying, because he's dead. Uh, anyways, uh, the 13th president. <sighs> Millard Fillmore. Uh, oh my god. Looks like a mob boss in a weird way. Alright, uh, it was the president of the United States, sir, and it was the last member of the Whig Party. Whig Party! So, this was like... So, basically, Republican... Democratic par Party. They were basically flipped back then. They basically aren't the way they are nowadays. Uh, but one... I'm pr I don't remember which one it was. I'm pretty sure it was Republican that didn't exist. And I'm pretty sure Whig Party was the thing until uh, it was dissolved, basically. Uh, and now we have uh, freaking donkeys and elephants, whatever they are. I don't know. Uh, so th that's pretty cool. Uh, a former member of the U.S. House of Representatives uh, from upstate New York, uh, Fillmore was elected to the 12th vice president in 1848 and successfully, uh, I mean, and succeeded to, uh, excuse me, the presidency in July of 1880 upon his death of U.S. Pres uh, president Zachary Taylor. Uh, Fillmore was... Um, <clears throat> instrumental into passing the Compromise of 1850. Uh, uh, it was during, like, the Mexican-American War, which we got, like, a bunch of, bunch of land uh, out of that. A bargain that led to a brief truce in the battle of, uh, over the expansion of slavery. He failed to win the Whig nomination. <laughs> the Whig nomination? nomination for the best wig <laughs> okay uh but gained his endorsement of uh nativist knowing nothing n no nothing party for years four years later and finished third in the 1816 presidential election you um, as a Whig party broke up after Fillmore's presidency, many of his conservative Whigs, uh, joined the Know Nothings and formed the American Party. That sounds freaking sick. Uh, what is the American Party? The Know Nothing Party is a Native, uh, da -da 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 -da. Native Americans prior, da -da -da -da. okay. Uh, in 1856, candidacy Fillmore... Uh, had little to say about immigration. Focus and said the Preservative Union <clears throat> uh, the Union and won only Maryland during the American Civil War. Fillmore uh, denounced secession and uh, agreed the Union uh, must be maintained by force if necessary, uh, but he was critical of Abraham Lincoln's war policies. Uh, after peace was restored, whoops, uh, he supported reconstruction policies. President Andrew Johnson Fillmore remained, uh, uh involved in civic interests in retirement, including the chancellor of, you know, he, he had, uh, helped fund in 1806, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so where do people rank him for his presidency? I don't know. It's kind of a big old nothing burger. I learned nothing from that. Uh, so where do we put him? <laughs> well, we'll put him in a C tier. Zachary Taylor. All right. Let's look at that. They're twelfth president of the United States. Uh, Zachary Taylor was an American military leader who served the twelfth president of the United States uh, until his death. And oh, Taylor's previously was a career United States Army resident, the rank of major general, becoming national heroes. 
As a result of victories of Mexican American War, he won an election to the White House despite the Bailey's political beliefs. His top priority as president was uh, preserving the Union. Uh, he died 16 months into his term, having made no progress uh, on the most divisive issue in Congress, slavery. Okay, Taylor died suddenly to stomach disease in what? And having, well, he 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 was interned for sixteen months. Is more forgettable than a president than a failed one. Wow. He he was a year. Bear, uh, he was a year and a half into his presidency, and he died from a stomach disease. That that's it. You know what? There we go. Uh, James K. Polk. Okay. Uh, James Knox Polk. Knox is a pretty cool name. Um, so he was previously the 13th Speaker of the House of Representatives and the 9th Governor of Tennessee. Uh, a... What does that say? Prote protege of Andrew Jackson. He was... Uh, we'll get to Andrew Jackson later. Uh, he was a member of the Democratic Party, party and the advocate of Jacksonian democracy. That was a whole thing. <laughs> Jacksonian democracy. We'll probably learn about that when we get to <laughs> Andrew Jackson, probably, actually. Polk uh, is chief, uh, chiefly known for extending the territory of the United States through the Mexican-American War during his presidency. The United States expanded significantly with the annexation of the Republic of Texas, the Oregon Territory, and the Mexican Session. Uh, following the American victory in the American Civil War. Okay. So he is uh, in charge of making America America, basically. Uh, though he is uh, relatively obscure today, scholars have ranked Polk favorably for his ability to promote and achieve major uh, items on the presidential agenda. Despite limiting himself a single term, he has also been criticized for leading the country into aggressive war against Mexico, thus uh, ex as ex as what is that saying? Divided between free and slave states, a property owner, uh, excuse me, who used slave labor for most of his adult life. He kept plantations in Mississippi and increased his slave ownership during the presidency. The legacy of Polk's international expansion with the United States reaching Pacific Coast, roughly. It's presented uh, to egregious wars and made the United States nation poised to become a world power but the sexual divisions so he had a slave is that what I'm is that what I'm reading okay so that would go and racist but I would probably put him in you because he did make america huge so we're, we're gonna put him in you <laughs> uh president john taylor okay <clears throat> john taylor 1790 to 1862 all right was the 10th president of the united states serving from 1841 to 1845 and briefly holding office as the 10th vice president of the in 1841 he was elected vice president on the 1840 uh wake ticket with president william henry harrison uh succeeding to the presidency after harrison's death 31 days after assuming office that's yes this is the guy this is the guy i was thinking about this guy this freaking guy we'll get to him in a bit 
All right. When the American Civil, uh, Civil War began, uh, Taylor sided with the Confederacy, despite his initial support for peace. He, um, excuse me, uh, he presided, press, whatever that this says. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. I joke about it all the time. I am genuinely terrible at reading. These aren't words I've ever seen in my life, so I'm just going based off the letters I see. Sorry if, if, for all you nerds out there. Over the opening, <laughs> over the Virginia Secession Convention, and won the election of uh, shortly after, uh, shortly before his death. Some scholars have praised Taylor's. Uh, political self, but historians have generally given his policy a low, low, low ranking. Okay. Uh, today, his seldom remembered in comparison to the other presidents. And Okay, so basically, <sighs> he served the Confederacy. Freaking okay. <laughs> <coughs> so that's a big old racist. William H. Harrison, this is the guy who, I mean, if you look at it, very literally, you know, he get kind of barely, kind of looks like Harrison Ford, let's see here, eh, kind of, kind of, he has a little more, more of a shorter, whiter face, kind of looks like Minecraft Steve, anyways, uh, yeah, we're putting him in sissy. He died even sooner than freaking Zachary T Taylor. I almost want to bump him up a bit because of how... He and it's funny because this guy, he died uh, after, like, giving, like, a whole speech on how, like, trying to prove how powerful he was. And, and people were trying to make fun of him because he was, like, sick. And he was like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. And then he literally died from, like, freaking some like sissy freaking disease it was like uh it was pneumonia which my grandma gets like every 20 minutes so and she's surviving a-okay <laughs> and this guy died freaking immediately he died a few days in, into his presidency so there's that oh but they didn't have the medicine back then okay freak off i i'm making a joke here Let's put him in sissy, all right? He didn't do anything anyways, so... You know, he, he didn't do anything remarkable anyways. Uh, Jesus Christ, what is that? What is that legally considered? All right. All right. Why? Ooh, what is that? Okay. Uh, Martin Van Buren. He sounds like freaking some weird, like arch nemesis to freaking like dracula or something <laughs> martin van buren this is a very french sounding name uh what's that Mar martin why does that have two a's what <laughs> uh dutch oh it's dutch all right uh was an american lawyer da -da 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 -da. was the founder of the democratic party uh, he had previously served as the ninth governor of New York and the 10th United States Secretary of the State, uh, excuse me, and the 8th Vice President of the United States. Later in life, Van Buren emerged as an elder statesman and import uh, anti-slavery leader who led Free Soil Party ticket in 18... Uh, 48 presidential election. All right, Van Buren. Uh, Van Buren was initially the leading candidate for the Democratic Party's nomination uh, again in 1844, but his continued opposition and the annexation of Texas angered Southern Democrats, leading uh, to the nomination of James K. Polk instead. Van Buren was the newly formed Free Soil Party's presidential nominee in 1848, and his candidacy helped 
uh, Wag nominee Zachary Taylor defeat Democrat Lewis Cass. Ugh. Ugh. Looks like he's made out of wax. Gross. Jesus. Uh, Van Buren returned to Democratic Party after 1848, but grew uh, increasingly opposed to slavery and became one of the party's outspoken abolitionists. Okay, that's good. Uh, he supported the policies of President Abraham Lincoln and Republican during the American Civil War. He died uh, in Kinderhook in July uh, 1862, aged 79. In historical rankings, historians and political scientists rank Van Buren as below average due to his handing of the pa panic of 1837 however Van Buren uh, largely remembered today as the leader of the formation of the two-party system in the United States okay so yeah he, he's pretty mid I mean he wasn't racist so that's good but that doesn't immediately give you like an A tier like Abraham Lincoln here because he actually took act in it. Uh, so we're gonna put him in a good old good old C tier. Andrew Jackson, the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. We're plopping this bad boy in S tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He maybe you know kicked, uh, you know the the n natives out and was the cause of the Trail of Tears, but he had a personal vendetta against him. He had his own personal reasons, okay? So, and, I mean, like, dude, this guy's freaking alpha as crap, dude. He, in his, in his, like, 60s, I believe, which nobody even really lived to back then, so there's that. Um, He was, like, old or something, I'm pretty sure. And... Um, and he literally, like, started beating somebody up. He literally killed somebody with his, like, bare hands because somebody, uh, dissed his wife. Like, uh, freaking what? <laughs> and then, uh, he, and he was, um, yeah, so he was, like, the only president uh, so far, and back then, too, he was the first and only president so far to actually kill somebody, uh, <clears throat> while they were in office, like, many people have killed people, like, uh, many of presidents probably killed people, like, George Washington, he killed people, probably, he was a general, uh, but that was, like, before he was a president, so it doesn't really count. This guy killed him while he was while he was president, while he was in office, which is freaking bonkers. Um, so yeah, and he started freaking nailing a freaking. He started punching somebody because somebody tried to freaking shoot him, uh, but he freaking dodged it like he was in the Matrix or something. I'm guessing, and he started going ham on him, and he had to get separated from him uh, before he could kill him. You know. So there's that. Uh, it's it's, fr it's pretty freaking sick, dude. I don't know. So th that's why I put him in S tier. Uh, he he was only um, he was also like he he was a rich man growing up. So like basically he uh, he he was more on the common man side of things. Like like you you know you and I like just. We're not rich, but we're not, like, deadbeat poor, basically. Uh, but he, he, he supported people who were, like, me to, like, literally licking grease off the side of the roads, basically. Uh, and so he... Uh, so that's pretty cool. So he supported the common man. Because uh, back then, if you were rich, that's it. You were freaking rich, and you basically ruled the world. Uh, poor people, they got a say in absolutely freaking nothing. Uh, and Andrew Jackson uh, got into that. So let's look up the Jacksonian democracy or whatever. Um, look at the Jacksonian democracy, where it is. Uh, pre uh, d d d d uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, is it not here? Bruh. 
Out of all the places I expect it to be. Am I missing it? Yeah. Jacksonian. Okay. Uh, Jacksonian democracy was a 19th century political philosophy. Um, excuse me. And the United States that expanded suffrage uh, to most white men over the age of 21 and reconstructed uh, a number of federal federal institutions uh, excuse me originating with seven u.s president seven seventh u.s president andrew jackson and his supporters it became uh, the nation's dominant political worldview for uh for a generation the term itself was active, was in active use uh, by the 1830s. This era, called the Jacksonian era or the Second Party System, by historians and political scientists, um, lasted roughly from Jackson's 1828 uh, election to as president uh, until slavery became dominant issue. Uh, with the passage of Kansas Nebraska Act. Uh, all right. So yeah, he basically had that. Uh, so that's cool. Um, so he supported the common man. John Quincy Adams, or I believe either grandson or son of John Adams. I mean, he literally has the same exact name. <laughs> so, uh, uh, here we go. Sixth president. John Quincy Adams. I don't know much about this guy, but he looks freaking fat and he looks short. Right. So does the original John Adams. How tall was he? Do we, do we not get a height? Come on, this is balls. Okay. John Quincy Adams. <laughs> Uh, 1767 to 1848, god dang, uh, was an American statesman, diplomat, lawyer, who served as sixth president of the United States from 1825 to 1829. He previously served as the eighth 20 United States Security of the State from 1817 to 1825. Uh, during his long de diplomatic and political career Adams has also served as an ambassador and is the mayor of the United States Senate uh, House of Representatives okay rather than uh, retiring to the public service Adams won an election in the House of Representatives uh, who he would serve from 1831 until his death of, in 1848 he remains the only former president to be the exact Excuse me. He remains the. F f he remains the only former president to be elected to the chamber. The chamber. What? <laughs> After narrowly losing his bids from governor Ma of Massachusetts and the Senate uh, re-election, Adams joined the anti. Uh, Masonic Masonic <laughs> Okay um, In the early 1830s Before joining the Whig Party uh, Which united Those opposed to, pres uh, opposed to President Jackson During his time in Congress Adams um, became Increasingly critical Of slavery and the southern leaders Who he believed Controlled the dem Democratic Party he was particularly opposed to the annexation of Texas. Oh, you f you would. You would. You would. Uh, as after the Mexican-American War, he saw um, as a war extended to slavery and a political grip on Congress. He also led the repeal to gag rule. What is a gag rule? That sounds weird and kinky. Um, the gag rule was a series of rules that forbade the raising, the forbade raising, 
consideration of or discussion of slavery in the U.S. However, okay, uh, which prevented the House of Representatives from debating a petition to abolish slavery. Prevented the House of Representatives to abolish slavery. Okay. Historians cur that Adams was one of the greatest diplomats and uh, diplomats and secretaries of the United and uh, <laughs> secretaries of state in American history. They typically rank him as the average president, and he is ambitious. He had an ambitious agenda, but could not get it passed by Congress. Excuse me. What? But what? What about this part? What about this part? Am I reading this the wrong way? Am I taking it in the wrong way? Like, like, this prevented the House of Representatives. He he led this. Okay. What? Okay. What does repeal mean? Actually, before I uh, repeal, uh, five. What? The legend. What? To revoke. Or, oh, so he got rid of this. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. That was my bad. Okay. So, he's good. He's good then. He's good. So, we'll put him in B tier. Uh, this guy. Holy Jesus. Okay. F fifth president. Monroe, Monroe, Monroe. Ah, Gillette died on July 4th. One of the... One of the... When coincidental deaths because I'm pr I'm pretty sure there was like two or three people who died on July 4th um Thomas Jefferson this guy and I think maybe even John Adams uh which July 4th if you don't know is also the day America gained their in independence so July 4th is a, a crazy absolutely insane uh you know date for america it's the birthday of america um and it is the death day of some of the original presidents uh, which is freaking wacky as heck I, I, i'm almost like i have a theory going on in my head like <laughs> like freaking uh king george the third just kind of like cursed america it was the 4th of July curse when we gained our independence. They're like, oh, they want independence? Curse you. And and then... <clears throat> and then people just started dying on July 4th. That, that's my theory. That That's just the theory. A, a gay theory. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, was an American statesman, lawyer, diplomat, founding father who served as the fifth president of the United States from 1817 to 1825, a member of the Demo uh, Democratic Republican Party, holy crap, that does not roll off the tongue at all, Monroe was the last president of the U Virginia dynasty, what the freak is that, in the Republican generation, and his presidency uh, conceded the era of good feelings, uh, so... Yeah, he was elected during the era of good feelings, which was around the time of the War of 1812, where basically we got a moral victory against Britain, because we went to war against Britain another time, and I don't think we exactly won that war, but we didn't lose that war, so basically that was a win to us. It was moral victory, and so thus starting the era of good feelings, and thus making, uh, you know, bookmarking... Uh, and, you know, placing America in, like, one of the greatest, you know, out there, you know, and making America, thus making America a world superpower now. So, that's freaking amazing. Uh, it's, am it's also amazing how uh, Mexico thought they could take America on. Holy Jesus. That was the easiest war, I'm pretty sure. Like, they couldn't even take on the Republic of Texas. Did they think they can t they can take the entirety of America at that time? What kind of drugs? What 
kind of drugs was Mexico on? <laughs> Anyways, back to this. Uh, I lost where I was here. So, following the, his retirement in 1825, Mon Monroe was uh, played by financial... Uh, difficulties. He died on July 4th in New York City, sharing the distinction with President John Adams and Tom Tom Thomas Jefferson dying on the anniversary of the U.S. independence uh, and ranking uh, above average president. I told you it was John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. So, And Thomas Jefferson was also, ironically, the one who wrote the Declar Declaration of Independence. So... It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, so he's a slightly above average. He served during the good, good feeling times. So we're going to put him in a C, put him at a B. Uh, James Madison, James Madison, 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 James Madison Jr. March 1750 to 1836 was an American statesman and diplomat founding father who served as the fourth president of the United States from 1809 to 1817. Uh, 1817. He hailed uh, as the father of the Constitution for his pivotal role in drafting and promoting the Constitution of the United States in the Bill of Rights. Uh, in 1817, Madison retired from the public office after the end of the presidency. Uh, he returned to his plantation, uh, Mont Montiplier, Montiplier, Markiplier, okay, uh, to his plantation Markiplier, then died there in 1836. Like Jefferson and Washington, Madison was a wealthy slave owner who never, uh, privately reconciled his Republican beliefs in his slave ownership, forced to pay debts he never freed his slaves, uh, and considered one of the most important founding fathers in the United States, and historians have generally ranked him as above average president. So I know he had a slave, so usually people would, you know, if racist is a thing, then you gotta put it there. But that's not really fair, because... A lot of people, even George Washington, had a slave. But we'll get we'll get to that in a minute, and we'll get to you in a minute, Mister Tom, uh, Thomas Jefferson. We'll get to you and your slave. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure all of these guys own slaves, all of them. And so I'm not willing to put freaking President George Washington, <laughs> you know, somebody who made America. Uh, and I'm not going to put him down here in the racist area. I'm going to put him here in the B area. Because freak you. Thomas Jefferson, my man. Now, I know you're going to be saying B. Maybe A, even. Because he signed the Declaration of Independence. He gave us... He made us free. But he didn't have to sign it. I mean, somebody else could have signed it. So, you know, it, it's easy as... Oh, I'm writing your name now. He did make the Louisiana Purchase. So he made America big. Uh, which is why I put this guy above, you know, these guys. Uh, because he made America big. Uh, so he... And, you know, Lewis and Clark, all that. But let's get to his slave. Alright. He owned a slave, and guess what? You know, unlike Bill Clinton, who didn't have uh, sexual relations with that woman, Thomas Jefferson did. Yeah, that's right. He stuck his penis in his own slave. Freaking wow. That was quite the eye-opener whenever I, <laughs> I found that out for the first time. I was like, okay, well, uh, I... I thought he was pretty cool, man. I don't know. He's a founding father. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to put him in racist, obviously. Uh, I don't even know if he, you know, asked for consent. So I would put him in creep. But that's more of a Benjamin Franklin area. Uh, and, well, Benjamin Franklin is another U.S. president. So uh, we're going to be putting him 
in his solid C tier. Because he did a lot of good for the United States. Declaration of Independence, uh, Louisiana Purchase, you know, being a founding father, being a president, yada, yada, yada. Excuse me. That's about it. President John Adams, father of J.Q. Adams. We're putting him in a U tier. Number one, he is short, fat. That's disgusting. You don't want a short man and a fat man, right, ladies? Um, so, like, and also, he had this alien rights thing. Let's look it up. John, John, what am I spelling? John Adams Alien. Uh, Alien Sedition Act, that's what it was called. Uh, Wikipedia. Uh, the Alien Sedition Acts were a set of four laws, um, enacted in 1798 that applied restrictions to immigration and speech. Uh, the Naturalization Act increased the requirements to seek citizenship. The Alien Friends uh, Act allowed the president to imprison and deport non-citizens the alien enemies act gave the president additional powers to detain non-citizens during times of war and the sedition act criminalized false and um mal malicious uh statements about federal government the alien friends act <laughs> And the Sedition Act surprise, uh, expired after a set number of years, and the Naturalization Act uh, was repealed in 1802. The Alien Enemies Act is still in effect. That's freaking weird. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so basically, not my favorite. Uh, I put him in you. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, <laughs> Then we got George Washington. This is obvious. I'm putting him in A. Not S. I'll tell you why. I think he's even more overrated than Abraham Lincoln. I I don't want to say Abraham Lincoln is way overrated. Of course he's not. I think he's a very smidgen. Very, very smidgen. Bas basically microscopic. You might as well give him an S. He's kind of in between S and A. Um... He's a, in fact, he's above Teddy Roosevelt. Let, so let's put him there. Uh, uh, but George Washington, he, he was a general before this, but he wasn't an amazing general during, like, the French and Indian War. He, he lost more battles than he won. And, well, he ended up helping us win the, um, <clears throat> the revolution the american revolution and he was the founding father the first president of course people are going to be like oh he was the first president so put him in a but th that's just easy and that's basically cheating um and then let's get to the fact yes he had a slave however he treated them nicely and he actually ended up letting him go he just let him go just like that uh so he, he was pretty nice and he was big he was strong um and uh he had military background so that put it that's put some above teddy roosevelt and he puts him kind of right next to lincoln because lincoln was great he was nice but he didn't have military background that's my thing um george washington did and he was he was like he was tall uh for back then people weren't too tall back then um so there there's that um, also, there's a theory, apparently, it's a theory that George Washington back then was gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so apparently, and people, yeah, he was married to a woman, but apparently he did that for the money. Uh, and apparently he was gay because he really enjoyed dancing, and he really enjoyed interior decoration, and it, 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 the list goes on and on. 
but apparently it was a, a theory that he was gay. So, anyways, that's just a theory. A gay theory. This is an unoriginal un joke because I already made it in the same video. But I don't care. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah. The, here, here's my, here's my thing. Here's my list. So, we, we got <laughs> Bill Clinton, uh of the uh famous quote i did not have sexual relations with that woman uh excuse me andrew jackson the actual alpha male he is literally killing people you know kicking butts and taking names uh and it's freaking 60s freaking wow actual alpha male <coughs> uh, so there's that uh you got kennedy who you know, he, he was a civil rights activist, so that's freaking cool. He was all about that good old anti-racism uh, stuff, so he was a, he was a good president. Uh, before he got freaking 360 no-scoped. Uh, so, there's that. Wasn't there also a thing where he had, like, his children lobotomized or something? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking about something else. Who knows? Anyways, that's going to be about it. Uh, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.